All right. Well, let's move us along to our uh, main topic for tonight. So uh, my topic tonight is uh, to discover what makes a high converting lead generating uh, website. So, and for those that don't know me, uh, I've been in the web space for uh, probably, what have we got since about, been online since 79. So that's probably going to date me. Um, actually, there was no online then. That was just when I first uh, touched a computer. Uh, but I have been on, online since the early 90s uh, and have been in the uh, web development field uh, for about 20 something years. I'm not going to tell you what the something is, but it's 20 something years and have seen lots and lots of changes uh, over that time. Most significant change is that things have got easier. Uh, there are more tools uh, available today uh, at uh, for free or at very low cost. So the sorts of things that uh, we were paying, uh, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars for years and years ago, you can get for like 20 and 30 bucks a, uh, a month these days and uh, a lot more powerful as well too. So, so tonight really is about a website. Now, has anyone chucked a website into chat here? Oh, yes, uh, no. Just looking to see if anyone's been bold enough to throw up their website here. All right, got one here with Neil Hockey. Let me just uh, grab that and we'll open that. Uh, anyone else wants to have a look at their website, you can feel free to throw it into chat now. Yeah, Ron's got his there. Sorry? Ron has his up there as well. Above oh, has he? Okay. I think let's just see if I can find that. Just scrolling through chat now. Okay, there's a few more coming up. I'll just grab these links now. All right. And we've got jodybrooks.com.au as well. Perfect. Okay. And we had. All right. There's Fred. Okay. Geraldine's Academy. All right. And Ron's was up here too, was it? Uh, let's have a look, see if we can find amongst the links. <coughs> I should think Ron's is uh, just a link tree one. Is that right, Ron? It's not your website. Yeah, I think it's just a uh, link tree. The, oh, web, right. the website is in the link there. Oh, it's in the link, is it? Okay. It is on the link, yeah, but. Okay. It, it's still very basic at the moment, so there's not a lot to look at. That's <laughs> all good. It's all good. Here we go. Our website. Perfect. Okay. All right. So let me just sort of line some of these up. Excellent. Okay. And I'll bring that across here. No. All right. So while I'm doing that, I do have a question for you. And that is what do you think the primary purpose of a website is? so we're just going to forget membership sites directory sites those specialist sort of sites we're talking about a uh, you know your business website what is the main purpose uh of your website do you think making what's, money. Job? what's this making job money. making money yep. definitely making money yep but Please. there's a uh, there's a role in before that as well too so that's a little further down the track Lead generation. So, and this is this is the website's purpose. So what was that, Fred? Lead generation. Lead generation. Absolutely. That is a hundred percent its job. So um, so once it's done that, uh, you, you can almost put your website to bed and say it's done its done its job there. So it's all about bringing in leads and inquiries. So that often happens before the sales. Um, it uh, it is about providing information for people but at the end of the day uh, you don't want people leaving you want them to uh, leave their uh, at the very least their email address and the reason for that is that um, uh, if someone comes to your website and they uh, and they don't leave their email address how do you know they've been there and how do you know what they're interested in so uh, and a lot of websites are set up so that uh, people come in they have a browse they have a look they leave um, they may still be interested in, uh, you know, your, your products and services, but there is no way for them to uh, be able to connect or contact. They may not be ready to phone you yet. They may not want to uh, leave a, um, 
uh, a message in your contact form. So once they're gone, they're generally gone forever. They won't, they generally won't remember your website address. Uh, and so if they leave, you have lost them. So the, uh, the idea of the website is to capture uh, the people that are there so that they leave their footprint, which is their uh, address, uh, that you capture that at the very least. So yes, lead generation is the number one uh, priority for it. Even e-commerce sites. So I see this mistake all the time. Uh, e-commerce sites need to uh, be thinking first and foremost about capturing email addresses before they make sales. Uh, because if people don't buy today, you need a mechanism to be able to communicate with them to let them know that you're, uh, you're still here. So, so I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of uh, what not to's at the moment. So let's, um, let's have a look at the websites we've got here at the moment. Uh, if I can find my sharing screen, here we go. All right. And uh, what, what we might do is uh, see if we can find some examples in here of some of the not to do things, um, not to embarrass you at all, but just really to uh, uh, give you some ideas as to uh, what you can do to, uh, to improve it. All right. All right. So the very first one is um, no sliders. So sliders are things like this one here on uh, Ali and uh, Ron, uh, com. So what sliders are, sliders or carousels, is they're uh, moving images on your, uh, on your website, normally sit above the fold on the front page, uh, quite popular in websites, uh, and, uh, and people quite like them, particularly website owners like them. The problem with it is, is that they are very poor for conversions. So they look good, but uh, they, uh, they don't convert at all. And so um, if you want to find out why that is, uh, just Google the term why sliders suck. It really is a, a search term. And uh, you'll find heaps of information about, and these are studies about sliders. You'll, you'll find heaps of information about, uh, you know, so why sliders uh, uh, just don't work for uh, conversions. Actually, probably this top one is the best one by uh, Yoast, who is an SEO uh, expert. So the problem with it is, is that uh, with sliders, um, uh, th this is your primary real estate. And we'll talk about what should go in there. But with sliders like that, you, um, and, and uh, definition of slider is, is there are images that uh, keep moving. So one after another, uh, and they may have uh, text on it or separate text on it as well. Problem is, is that the user is not controlling their experience. Um, if you set the slider to move too quickly, then uh, they, they miss reading the information on it. If you set it to go too slowly, uh, then um, they're waiting for the uh, slider to go through and people read at different speeds. Some people are fast readers, so, um, uh, so, they, um, uh, so you can't keep uh, any of these uh, people happy at all. The other reason too is that you're mixing your messages. So when you've got sliders, you've got a number of messages in here. So, um, uh, and so mixing those messages is uh, uh, sort of confuses people. So if you want to really confuse people, give them a choice of 10 things and tell them to pick one. So, you know, this is in the uh, um, uh, physical world as well, too. You'll find that uh, a lot of people won't be able to make decisions. They'll um and ah. But um, if you give uh, people a choice between two things, then uh, they're more likely to be able to make a choice. Or if you just present them with one option, then it's either just a yes or a no. So rather than having a slider up on your website here, it is far better to have what they call a hero image, which is an image that represents the um, big promise or the transformation that you're offering people. So with your product and service, there will be a, a major transformation that you're offering most people or a big promise that you're uh, offering out most people. So, um, uh, so for, for Ron and uh, Ellie's site here, I think um, oh, there's, there's an expression you use uh, all the time. What is it about the 50s? So like your life begins after 50 or you, you're not on the scrap heap after 50? What is it, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, uh, the, the best is yet to come is really the, the catchphrase, yeah. Um, uh, but... Um, 
Yeah, so your, what, your, uh, your best uh, years are ahead of you, isn't it? Inspiring over 50s to discover the best is yet to come. Yeah. Yep. Perfect, perfect. So I can see down here, you've got uh, this one here, helping over 50s to live a healthy, health, happy, abundant and meaningful life, inspired and excited that the best is yet to come. So that there is, uh, that's your big promise. Yep. So uh, so you'd move that into, uh, you know, over the hero image area. Yep. And, um, and then you would have a call to action, which would be, uh, you know, find out how, learn more, book a, um, a, a consultation download uh, something watch out watch a, um, um, a a mini course something there that uh, starts to uh, in, engage in there but that becomes your big promise which you're um, that you're providing people in um, uh, you know who come to your site cool appreciate appreciate that feedback I've just been I was just experimenting with sliders um, uh, last week actually and stuck this up but uh, Getting that feedback is perfect. Thank you. Yep. Well, now it's time to get rid of it and put a yeah. <laughs> put it here. That'll be, put it here. Yeah, That'll put be it here. gone by gone by lunchtime. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> the um, there's there's a couple of things you need in that hero area too. Is one you need to address who is it uh, you're uh, serving. So you've got that here, helping over fifties. So so over fifties is is the is your target market. Yeah. Uh, and then it, what's your promise to, and here's your promise to live a happy, healthy, abundant and meaningful life, inspired and excited that the best is yet to come. And then, uh, so that's the second thing you have. So it's the, you know, who it is that you're aiming for, what's your big promise and then your call to action. And so that's, you know, watch now, book now, learn more, discover, you know, those, those sort of things there. Now you can have two calls to action up there. One of the calls to action can be what we call your, primary call to action or your um uh the one that uh, where you really want to direct people to so like if you're selling a uh, uh or wanting people to enroll in let's say a webinar that might be your your primary call to action or if you're if you're wanting to book keep people into a discovery call that might be your primary call to action the other call to action you can have up there and there could be two buttons that sit side by side is uh you think what's what's the step before that for people that are not ready to commit to uh say watching something or downloading something or um or or having a consultation for instance what's the step back from that and so the step back from that may be uh you know sort of downloading an ebook it might be sort of to discover something or to or to learn more uh, but something that doesn't involve engaging directly with you yet so you might have one call right. to, to actually yeah. engages with you directly the other one which is where they can so sort of grab something and consume it in their own time uh, anonymously so what you know one's anonymous one's not anonymous right excellent all right so that's that's good you had that slider up there because i was hoping someone would <laughs> so we can talk about it <laughs> um but but definitely go to uh you know if you google why sliders suck uh then and have a read through it they, they'll they'll talk about the experimentation and uh, sign box at all um and here you go here only one percent of people have a slider so the conversions are very 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 low compared to having sort of a uh, you know a good strong solid call to action in that uh, area there the other thing that um goes with as well too is um and i'm really pleased to see that there's none of that happening here as far as i can see yep is excellent is things that move and bounce and pop on the website so uh so that's a bit of a uh, trend uh, particularly with some of the page builders that are around now is to have things that sort of drop and bounce and pop and all that sort of thing that's that there it looks good but again it's a distraction for anyone now coming uh, to the website uh, really what they're here for is the information that's on your website not the fancy stuff that uh, you know is happening on the website they're not really here for uh, entertainment uh, if they wanted that they go to the movies um, they're really here for uh, information and um, and really often to solve a problem. So they're looking for often for a solution to an issue or a, a problem that they've got. That's how they've often found you. So um, yeah, so don't be tempted into sort of getting some of those uh, moving graphics and that sort of thing there. One thing you should have is a video. Um, so I can see that, uh, what have we got? Easy, Eco Easy Compot Composter has got a video there, how to install and use a Compot, which is uh, perfect. 
So, um, so that's a that's a great example of a video there. We're on the um, on the home page. Uh, this is the product that you sold immediately. You've got a um, a video there showing people how to use it. That there is a far more powerful video than some of the videos that people have on the website, which is uh, welcome to my website. So you should never have a welcome to my website video there because people are already at the website. They don't need to be welcome there. Um, uh, and if you think if you step into their shoes, what is it that they want? What's the problem they're looking to solve? Uh, that's what you have in your video. So you're not introducing yourself. You're showing them uh, how uh, you know being here is going to solve their uh, problem or their issue or the you know that got the solution they're uh, seeking uh, for themselves. All right. Um, oh, and. When it comes down to calls to action, what do we got on here for calls to action? We've got a register for a newsletter. All right. So that one there, register for newsletter, that's another one of those uh, things that I say, if you've got that on your website, time to move it on and get rid of it. Uh, the reason for that is, is that nobody wants to register for a, another newsletter. So um, they... Um, uh, that uh, newsletters are a dime a dozen on the on the website. No one wants more emails. They were good when uh, uh, websites first started out. Good things that are quite specific uh, niches and quite narrow specific niches where people do want to get a newsletter. So, for instance, one of the newsletters I get is a. Um, a coding problem a day. So it's a website about so with coding tutorials for you know building websites, and it is a problem a day. So I'll send you a problem a day. So that's that's sort of like their newsletter. But your um, but for a site like this, uh, the idea here. Oh, the other thing about newsletters too, just to say as well too, is how many people here have decided that a newsletter is a great thing to do? They put a subscribe to newsletter on the website. They've never written a newsletter. Yep. Um, so a few of us, uh, some of us might have written one uh, newsletter and come to the second one, we get too busy. So that's the problem is you are creating a lot of work for yourself that you don't need to create for yourself and uh, you are probably not going to get around to it. This was true prior to the uh, internet, true in internet age too. So newsletters create a lot of work that, uh, that you don't need. So instead of that, uh, you're far better off to have something that um, is, uh, again, solves a problem for uh, the visitor that's there. So rather than, uh, say, uh, register for a newsletter, you could have something like, um, it's on a site like this, what do you use a composter for? Uh, uh, you could have some composting recipes, for instance, to, uh, to grow uh particular herbs so you know there might be a a a, a recipe for compost uh, if you've seen my compost you know that i have not followed a recipe at all um and so um so you can actually provide so, you know some recipes about how to compost so you'll what you'll find there is one you'll get more people that will uh, leave their email address for that um and generally people that are downloading something like that are, are interested in creating compost for their garden because they've uh, downloaded a recipe uh, for it or a um yeah, I suppose I suppose you call it a uh, recipe so you could have uh, you, you know you could have your top five recipes or top you know or top 10 you know best composts uh, to make um and um and so you can get people downloading that now the good thing about that is um when people subscribe to a newsletter it's pretty generic you don't know what, what they're uh, interested in but if they subscribe to or they download your five best composting recipes, you've got a pretty good idea that they're interested in making compost and you've got a pretty good idea that they're interested in gardening as well too. So um, so when, you, when, when you're collecting these email addresses, they should go into a CRM. How many people here have got a CRM, which is a customer relationship management tool? Just give us a show of hands. Great. Perfect. Those that didn't have their hands up, that will be your job tomorrow is to get a CRM. That is your most powerful tool that you will ever have in your um, in your business. Uh, and it should be a must. Every time a website's built, it should be connected to a CRM. Reason for that is, is that when you connect a CRM to your website, these email addresses that you're collecting go into the CRM and, uh, and uh, you can... Uh, 
uh, do what they call is tag the uh, the people in there and uh, you can tag them for what they downloaded uh, for what page they're on uh, when they visited uh, you know how long they spent on your site so you get lots and lots of information in your CRM but if they're downloading you know your um, recipes for compost uh, then you can deliver out your first uh, it will deliver out that PDF through the uh, CRM um, and then you can queue up a whole lot of emails in behind it so um, you don't want to be just sort of sending out the uh, the download there and um, and that's it so you want to start a conversation with people because the chances are if they're on the site they've downloaded your information they are probably looking at a solution they're probably looking at your com competitor sites as well too uh, and uh, you want to make sure that you're, you're uh, top of mind uh, all the time uh, as they're doing their research. So what I would do with something like that is, um, uh, you know, the first email you send them would be to uh, download the ebook, uh, you know, with the recipes. The second one would be um, uh, you, you would have an email which might say uh, go into uh, what the first recipe that you had in the uh, in the ebook, uh, what, what sort of plants you grow with that. So, you know, what it's best for. So you might sort of have a whole description about, you know, what plants grow, grow best with it, uh, what times of year, uh, you know, what, uh, what, you know, and, um, uh, and, you know, and, and some information about how, how to use the content again. Two uh, might be, it could be this video that you've got on the um, home page. So there's no reason why you couldn't send that out. Or you might have another video, which is showing, uh, you know, sort of, you know, how to uh, create compost. It might be, you know, maybe what composting equipment uh, to use. And uh, obviously, uh, and you could do a roundup of composting equipment. So um, in this uh, in this uh, website here, we've got the um, easiest composter you'll ever use. So I would do something like, which would be a comparison between, uh, you know, sort of uh, the Tumblr website, uh, tumbler composters that you get from Bunnings, uh, the uh, the ones that sit in the corner of the garden, the home built ones, all of the uh, and, and why those ones are such hard work. And so you make the comparison so you can see how easy this one uh, this one particular solution is. So people are looking at uh, you know all sorts of options. Then you help them to uh, point towards this one. Then you might have a um, a case study as a as a uh, as your next email, which could be. Um, Maybe one of your clients or customers that have a, a sensational garden uh, used the um, uh, product there, created some fantastic compost. What they did, maybe even include, include their own particular recipe they use for it. Or if they're like me, they don't have a recipe; just everything goes in it. Um, and and uh, in, you know, you can do an interview, a case study, that sort of thing there. Um, and then um, and then you might. Um, what else have we got? You got some gardening articles in here as well too. Uh, composting articles so all of these um, articles that are in here no reason why you couldn't pull these out and actually use them for email as well too because the chances are people may not have read uh, all of these um, articles so you can reuse those uh, in your uh, uh, you know autoresponder email campaign as well too and um, and the reason why we're doing and and it's all set on autopilot so once they download it that triggers off, you know, the 15 emails that you've got queued up in there to go out. And, uh, you know, towards the end, you, you know, or and in the middle, you might start to make an offer in your emails for the uh, products that you've got here. So, um, uh, so you, you know, you, you can make an offer, you could have a, a package deal, a special, or uh, even just a link to uh, come and buy the uh, products from the uh, website. Uh, but the reason why you do it is that it's automated um, um, and uh, you get people who will uh, download it and that kicks off the series of emails. You don't have to do anything more. The problem with writing newsletters or sort of thinking about uh, you know, phoning people or you know, sending out uh, emails when people have uh, done something on the website is you have to remember to do it. And uh, a lot of people get busy, I know that I do, and just forget to do these sort of things so the more you can automate on this the uh, the easier it becomes the better it is the, the more leads you're going to get and um, the uh, the higher your sales are going to be does that make sense just give us a thumbs up if that's all making sense there great okay um all right so we, so that was uh videos uh crm what else have we got here um and and we have talked about Nick, can I ask a question in that space before we? Yeah, go on? ahead, Paul. Yep. <clears throat> uh, I, I take note of everything you talk about with um, the carousels and the likes, um, and I, uh, personally, I can't stand just seeing meaningless photos, even though 
just for the sake of having a pretty picture. I do have a carousel on mine, um, but it's uh, loaded with interactive videos. So yep. if you see one goes past and it's written on the front of it, you can click on it and play that video, whether it's a testimonial, video testimonial from somebody or something like that. Is that a bit better than just having a lot of nice pictures? It's, it is better because you've got sort of a multimedia, well, you know, a video sort of um, uh, medium in there. Um, but I would say, is, is that at the top of your website? Very top, above the fold. And it's right next to yep. the video of me introducing the business and, what, and solving the problem for you. Have you got a call to action up there as well? Uh, not right there, no. Okay, because so that... Underneath, underneath that, there's a short description of the various services that I'd offer. Yeah. And so I has a call to action to find out more about that service, whether you want to do a conference or a, or something. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So you've got a range of services that you're mm. offering, and all uh, over different types. Yeah. Yep. And people will select whatever service that uh, yeah. they happen to be interested in. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would I would experiment with that, Paul. Mm. I would. Um, uh, I would move that uh, carousel down and then uh, just experiment with a, um, uh, you know, hero image. Now, probably for you it would be your hero image probably would be a video, like you, you would have a video playing. Uh, yep. um, and I'd possibly look at, um, if you think about generating leads, I would do something about uh, what are the, uh, what are the top, um, whether it be sort of uh, five, um, critical things that people should consider before uh, they, uh, you know, get ready for video. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's because you, what you'll find is you, you'll have some people there that are considering video. Uh, they, they're sort of just looking around at the moment. They're not in the space to buy right now. Um, but if you can get them to download that document, mm -hmm. then what you can, what you can mm -hmm. then go and do yeah. is um, you can follow them up with your automated sequence and say, and yeah. you can ask them a question. I, I would ask them a question. You know, what sort of, what sort of uh, event are you looking to, um, you know, for your video? Is it a mm -hmm. conference? What, you know, that sort of thing there and ask them to reply. So, so, so you will actually get some replies back when, when people do that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then sort of, uh, and then if you do get those replies, then uh, you can then segment them in your CRM uh, to, let's say someone wants conference videos. Mm. So then you can just sort of uh, start to send them videos on conferences and case studies and that sort of thing there. So, um, so I, I would, I would experiment with that there um, really just to build your lead list. Mm. So not making sales, build, build your lead list. Yeah. Yeah. Is okay. that helpful? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in fact, that, that brings me to um, another important thing. And uh, that's to think about uh, uh, two words. This, this is fundamental to your lead generation. If you, if you get this right, you will have an abundance of leads that, uh, and you will never have to scrape and, and scrounge for them again. And that is uh, look to solve people's immediate need. So their immediate need. So what that means is, um, uh is let's say um let's say someone is coming to a website to um to buy um or, or to inquire about who have we got here let's just have a look at some of those websites again sorry um ron here um nick sorry i just i have to jump off early tonight i've got another webinar That's to join so thanks for your comments today and i'll pick up any other comments um on the replay it'll be up on youtube so yep good as gold Great. thanks ron thanks nick all and right. everybody all right let's just have a look at these uh, websites again all right so we've got uh can you see geraldine's academy there okay i've got that on there yep um all right so this is online courses and projects for Genomi machine uh, embroidery enthusiasts. All right, so um, yeah, this is probably quite a good example. Um, so you think about uh, what what people's immediate uh, need is. Uh, so this is online courses. So I'm just reading this uh, through Fred, so I get an idea of what it what it's about. Uh, 
Okay, topics and cover machine embroidery, uh, applique, quilting and hoop. Okay, so this is quite a specialist niche uh, website. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll be looking at a lead generation thing was, is, is what is people's immediate need when they, uh, when they arrive at the site? Um, so, so what that might be for this one here. So they've got a Janome machine. So, so it's an immediate need is maybe not what you're selling, but it's, it's an issue or a problem that they want to have solved, you know, right now. Um, so, and it can be before they get to buying what you've got. So let's say, uh, let's say someone arrives here, uh, and, um, they're looking for a, um, uh, they're looking to sew, but they actually don't have a, uh, sewing machine. So, uh, they want to learn how to sew on a sewing machine. So, um, th there's, there's two possibilities for an immediate need. One is, is what machine do I buy? So how do I decide? what sewing machine to buy so obviously this site here is um uh, is for janome machines so um so an immediate need would be uh say something like a a guide or a checklist to download to help you to choose uh the machine that is going to be ideal for you based on uh you know what it is that you're going to be making so an immediate need um uh, another immediate need might be um uh, or still, uh, if the, if they do have a uh, machine, uh, and you've you've probably got some feedback about this as well too, with uh, people that uh, come to the site, is what are the biggest problems they have with the machine? Um, not being a sewer myself, uh, it could be um, you know the thread gets stuck. You know how do you un how do you un unstick the thread on the machine? That might be an immediate need. Um, or what setting should I use for uh, making uh a, a shirt for instance that might be an immediate need so so you're thinking about what can you give away that uh, satisfies an immediate need that they will leave their email address for uh to to get it and then you can start your conversation so this is like pre them buying and uh when you start that marketing conversation with them through the crm then uh, you become their best friend because you're starting to give value uh, and you're starting to solve some of their problems. So uh, who are they going to go to when, you know, if they're looking for, you know, more advanced training on um, on sewing, uh, but to the person or the business already that has already provided them lots of value for free. Does that make sense? So yep. does that sound like it's on the right track? Yeah, all good. Yep. Yep. Yeah, happy with okay. that. Yep. yep. Um, what is it? We've got the studio. Uh, masterclass, Edge Club. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so, so think about immediate need. Who else have we got here? Let's see if we can find another one. Um, actually, I know someone on this. So it happens to sell wines. So uh, <laughs> you've got some great wines. Then you've got someone here from uh, it Mount Nathan Winery. If I got that right, Rebecca. <laughs> um, so, so an immediate needs for um, for wine might be um, uh, what wine goes with the uh, well, you know with the uh, dinner that I'm serving tonight. What's what's the uh, the best wine for fish? What's the best wine for meat? What's the best wine for vegetarians? And uh, what's the uh, best wine for romance? So that might be a, a, an immediate uh, need there. So, so think about that there. When, when people are coming to buy wines, they might be just coming to search your uh, wine store. Um, and if they're like me, I have got no idea. I just look, is it red? Yes. If it's red, it's mine. So, um, and so then the next consideration is how much. Um, but uh, if, uh, but but there is a risk there that someone like me might um, uh, I might not know the site um, and I might not know the wine so I might actually sort of uh, have lo and behold Dan Murphy's open in another tab shock horror um, and um, and so I might be looking and comparing uh, those as well too so uh, uh, if you have on your website uh, like a guide there for uh, choosing the best wine to go with 
the uh, meal that you are preparing or for the occasion that you are uh, uh, buying it for, then um, uh, a couple of things happen. One is they download it. You've got their email address. Two is there's this principle of psychological reciprocity. And that means, uh, and this is probably a good example too. If, if, if I go to the bar and I go and buy you a drink, uh, then you feel uh, obliged to buy me the next one. You wouldn't let me go out and buy the next round. You would go and buy the, uh, the, buy the next round. So that's called uh, psychological re reciprocity. If I give you something, you feel uh, that, uh, you know, obliged to uh, reciprocate that, uh, you know, next time round. So in this sense here, if you've given uh, people information that's going to help them with their uh, choice of wine, then uh, they're going to reciprocate that uh, by uh, more often than not buying the wine from your site. Does that make sense? Um, a really good example of this is Bunnings. Um, and um, I wonder if I can pull it up and, uh, and show you. Bunnings have got a great website for this. And this is a really good lesson for, uh, for all of us. Um, Bunnings have got lots and lots and lots of uh, videos on their website. They've got a, uh, a good blog there as well, too. Um, let's see if we can find their videos. Uh, let's try and find this here. And I know the soul, but we're learnt to uh, construct a gate, uh, learnt to uh, build a fence. All right, I can't really find the videos here now. No, it's still coming up here. No. Then there was the link at the bottom of that page said, let's keep in touch. I was there? Yeah, nope. for your email. Okay, I think they may have that. Uh, oh, hang on, here we go. Find a track your order returns to uh, products, gift cards, catalog, Bunnings Magazine. Bunnings Magazine is good. Uh, what do we got? Services. No, can't find it here. That's that's right. Uh, but but uh, in there, you, you can probably Google sort of things like uh, oh, how to make a gate. There we go. See if it'll come up and search. How, uh, there's Mitre 10 has got it. Here we go. How to build a gate DIY at Bunnings. And, um, okay, so this is just given their uh, YouTube site. Oh, because that's just come directly off our YouTube. But these are also on the uh, Bunnings website as well too. But what they do in these videos is that um, uh, they have instructions here, in this case here, how to build a gate. Uh, they're good, they're detailed, uh, they have someone demonstrating it. What's more, they're demonstrating uh, uh, with the tools that Bunnings sell. Uh, they're demonstrating with the equipment or the uh, materials that Bunnings sell as well too. And uh, you can walk out with a shopping list of uh, what you need to, um, uh, to build a gate. So you can take that along to Bunnings and uh, you can say, this is what I need. And uh, you can get everything there at Bunnings. You don't have to go to a number of different stores. You don't have to go to Mitre 10 and think and try and find the equivalent that uh, they were talking about in the uh, Bunnings video. You go there and you get exactly what was in the video. So, um, so if you can produce videos like that on your uh, website, which are, and these are free, by the way, for them, and uh, they're really sort of just demonstrating sort of uh, the materials that they, they sell, then um, uh, that one there uh, gives you, uh, gives a great opportunity to increase your revenue. But it doesn't do anything for lead generation. So the one step that I would, um, and, and that's probably that this will, this will be not Bunnings objective. They're not into uh, lead generation. They're into sales. They just want people into their uh, into their shops. But for um, a smaller business, I'd be looking at lead generation. Is that you would put in front of the video uh, a an email capture. So say so here, here, here uh, put you know, give us your email address to to um, and we'll send you the link to the video on how to uh, build build a gate, for instance. So think about your uh, products and services. Uh, again, that that um, that may work well with the uh, sewing machine uh, website, having sort of some how-to videos in there, which start to entice people in. Um, and uh, it would work with uh, probably uh, this uh, direct compost or the um, 
compot composter. So videos would be great for that. Um, and you can have, you know, even in that one there, you can have videos on, uh, you know, how to grow various types of uh, vegetables and herbs and, and, and preparing soil and ground and all that sort of thing there. Um, uh, wine making, uh, you can have, um, uh, you can have videos on um, uh, how to, how to pour the wine. You know, apparently there's, there's ways of being able to pour wine to make it um, taste a whole lot uh, better. I didn't know that, but apparently there is. I just put it into a bottle and shake it up. But um, so, so you can think about, you know, what are the common things that people uh, don't know about that they would like to know? And also what is their immediate need? Making mold wine. Love that. So there's a really good one. So uh, yeah, that great suggestion. Um, all right. Uh, you could demonstrate five minutes of a lesson via a video. Yes, you can do that as well. So you can have a, a taste taster as well. Or the other thing too is to uh, pick up uh, very small um, parts of your program, your course, your product or your service, show people how to use it, show it in its entirety so they could walk away and, and do what it is that you show. And uh, what you'll find is that um, is that people that that will bring people back asking for more. So, for instance, uh, Fred, I would think on your site, uh, let's say one of your things, and I'm not sure whether it is or not, but one of the things is how to um, how to make it. So, if I was to make a mini video on that, I would do something like uh, how to um, how to create the collar on a shirt. So, you're given a detailed video on how to make a collar but you're not showing them how to do the rest of the shirt. Uh, and uh, you send that to them. And then, uh, you know, for the next video, it's, uh, you know, they, they subscribe to the monthly program or, you know, what, what, however that program works. So yeah, there, there's, there's, um, there's a tab up the top on that site that takes them to free videos. Okay. Yep. So you've got some of that already. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So there's okay. a free video, free, free tutorials. Free tutorials. Yep. yep yep perfect perfect so you've got some of that there already which is great uh, remember to put put a call to action in the video as well too so um yeah, if you've got those it's great or a call to action around the video or if it's going out with uh, your email marketing a call to action in your email marketing about what's next so you've solved their immediate need uh, and then the next thing you've got to do is is to answer the question what's next so if you remember that quick, one, quick interjection here is it fred is it where you have your link there says free tutorials, put the word video in that heading, in that title, whether it's free video tutorials or free tutorial videos, because people will see that and they'll go there. Yep, good suggestion, thank you. Can I ask a quick question too? Yeah, go ahead. Now I've forgotten, damn it. Oh, <laughs> fruit. Um, you're waiting too long. Yeah, exactly. What was he talking about before before uh, that Paul mentioned that about the videos. Damn it. Uh, was, uh, was that about sort of the mini videos? Oh yeah, that's right. So do you think it's worthwhile? Um, Cause you know how on YouTube you can make your videos public or private. Yeah. So if you make them private, I make mine all public because I want to me, that's what gets people to my website, watching my videos. But is it worthwhile making some of them private? And that's what people get when they sign up. So that you have a, a series of private videos that nobody else can access unless you sign up. Now, I, I don't particularly like that idea, but I do wonder whether that would work better. If, if your model is, um... Uh, yeah, a subscription model or a sign-up model where you uh, want people to pay for the videos, um, then uh, and, and it's part of let's say a membership uh, site or it's a, or, or it's a course, then by all means. Except you wouldn't make them private; you would make them unlisted because uh, mm -hmm. if you've got if you've got them private, then uh, you can't actually embed those into a website to uh, be watched, so they'd be unlisted. Um, wouldn't you so, just so, put a link in an email? You'd send an email with a link. To the video. Yeah, you could do that too. Yes, you could do that as well too. Yep. And in fact, uh, what what what's better than just a link is to get a Giphy maker. So you know those little gifs which are like moving um, uh, moving pictures uh, with a uh, video icon on it. So it looks like a YouTube video. Uh, and then you put the link uh, on that gif. So uh, when when the email goes out, 
uh, you know, people see what looks like a video because you can't embed, embed videos into a, um, uh, an email. So you embed a GIF into it, which, which is moving as if the videos are talking. So it might be the first two or three seconds and then they click on that and then that takes them through to the uh, video. Oh, okay. yeah. I, I, and I, I would pro I would also embed the video on my website rather than taking them through to YouTube, uh, because if it's on your website, then you can have your calls to action around it as well. That's true, but it's not as good doing it that way. It take it uses up too much um, um, power on your website, so you won't. That's you're true. better off having a link from YouTube to your That's website. True. Otherwise, and if it's done right, it'll be cached on a site off of um, like on amazon if you've got an amazon um, hosted site they have yep. a all your all your readily cached items on a completely different site and so yep. the link on your website goes straight to those sites and it's super fast and it's much faster and more efficient than putting it embedding it on your website yeah uh the that that yes, may have been true. not quite true yeah i was gonna say no. that may have been true a while ago but it's not yeah, quite it's not true. true now there's a um so 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 with youtube now what happens is um when you embed the video on your uh, in your website but it's hosted on youtube it actually plays on uh youtube servers so it's not playing on your website so okay. you lose very little of the bandwidth so um <clears throat> i would be going to put it on your website rather than a link through to somewhere else because if, you, if you've got a link somewhere else you lose them you've got but no opportunity to put your call to action i do that but i have the um at the end of the video it doesn't stay on youtube it it stays on that's, my videos okay that's because you're using youtube now we all if i don't mind if you don't mind me adding another little thing in here youtube is really great we love it because it's the second biggest search engine and it's owned by google so it's a great place it's the greatest place for your videos to get found in search but on your website as a professional and you're a professional because you've got a website embed it from vimeo not from youtube and you have complete control over what happens to your video how it's presented how it looks and what happens most importantly what happens when it's finished it doesn't show you nine pictures of someone else's business but how but how does vimeo um how do you search for vimeo videos then if, you know like if you want your videos found in search yes you still put your video on youtube because it's a search engine, but when you want to display it as is in embedded oh, your into saying. your website, you embed it from Vimeo yeah, because it is more professional and it doesn't take you to your competitors' websites or their videos when you or airplane crashes or whatever when you're finished. Okay, okay. Yeah. So Vimeo, Thanks. you don't. Um, there is a free level, um, but it is far far better working into working with your website than youtube and it has that giphy creator that uh, nick talked about a moment ago built in there as well oh, okay thanks um, yeah. yeah it does too yep so i uh, yeah absolutely concur with that that's uh, vimeo is uh, what uh, we use for all of our private videos that we want to yep. control so yeah thanks for that paul yep i've got hundreds of videos on vimeo i've got a couple of dozen on youtube yep yep yeah, so all of our all of our public ones that we're happy to have out there and sort of have links back to the website, all on YouTube, all the rest of them, all on Vimeo. So 100%. Yep. <clears throat> one, one little trick for uh, YouTube as well, if you've got your videos on YouTube, if you want to get a link back to your website, make sure that in the description, uh, the very first thing in the description, you have a link to your website. And so that link starts with HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. So you put the whole thing in there. Uh, and when you do that, it becomes clickable. So if you just put your domain in, it's not clickable, but you put the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. Very first thing in the description. And then you can, uh, and there, you know, you've got a uh, backlink back to your website that people can see and can click on. um all right so i'm just going to put an, an example into the chat just a link you can look at it later it's um some work i did for a car dealer or two car dealers up the road and this was their idea of engaging with their new car buyers uh it's a five minute video on how to change a tire perfect excellent yeah, yeah that's a great example yeah because yeah. that, that's a that's a really good example of an immediate need hmm. Particularly if you, um, if you, 
wrap it up in the problem, how the problem hurts you, and here is a solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Paul, well, while, while you're there, mate, I just want yeah, to I'll put a note there for you in chat. Just okay. a couple of things I noticed about your website, mate, that you might want to have a look at. Sure. Uh, at your leisure. Uh, let's just back up there and chat a bit. So I just thought I'd bring that to your attention just while I got okay. to you. Yeah, no worries. Thanks. I know it's got a few issues. <laughs> uh, you're right, you're right. All, all good websites are only ever 80% complete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a mechanic doesn't serve as his own car. That's the problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. All right. So any, any sort of questions so far, any comments so far that uh, on anything I've covered at the moment? I have a question from way back when. I'm not sure yes. it will make much sense anymore. Oh, that's um, right. When you first started showing the website, she said that people don't want to go to your website and listen to a video about you. Yeah. I'm a mortgage broker. So one of the things I sell is me. So you do. Yep. That's a, that's, that's, a re just... that, that's a really good example. So you, you've got, you've got two things that you're selling there. Um, yeah. Uh, because you're in a really competitive market, there are no, mortgage brokers. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you'll find a mortgage broker on every block. Um, so uh, you you really have to. So it really is about building relationships and how do you stand out? How you, how you're different to everybody else in a way that um, that is meaningful to them, not meaningful to you. The second Correct. thing is is uh, is are people's immediate needs when they get to a um, uh, a site, uh, you know, a mortgage broker or a bank site. What is their immediate need? And it's probably not that I want a loan. Um, so, so that's what you're looking at. So, you, you, so immediate needs can be things like, um, oh, uh, yeah, we use. Uh, I was a, I had a mortgage broking company for ten years. So, so if I'm reasonably familiar with the industry now, <laughs> but but we, oh, we like in the early days of the site, we had the um, the five dirty secrets that the banks don't want you to know. So that was one of our, uh, you know, ebooks that I got downloaded. And in fact, that got downloaded a lot. So I can imagine. Um, because people, because can you believe people think that banks are into dirty tricks? They have a lot more than five now, though. Oh, What's that? There's a lot more than five dirty secrets now. Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> that's yeah, right. a lot less than you think, actually. But yeah, go on. Yep. Now, the other thing too <laughs> is around them. <laughs> yeah. The other thing too is is you think about uh, and and this actually leads into the um the, the last section that I've got here is about where people are in their customer journey and their buying buying cycle. So uh, they're going to get to your website uh, at different phases in their buying cycle. So for some, yeah. uh, you might get some there that want a pre-approval to go and buy a home. You'll get some that are first homeowners and, um, and they've got no idea what to do. So their immediate need is, what do I do? How, where do I start? So, so, your, so their immediate need is help you know give me some guidance sort of thing yep. um and it may, and uh, you have to think it may not be a phone call to you yet because that's a little bit threatening um mm. uh, you know to uh, actually because they might actually try and sell you something so um and you don't want to sound stupid as a customer exactly exactly mm. so so you know this is how people think you know it's not may not be true but that's how they think and so um so what you do is it's really sort of a, a slow entry into yeah. it um where um, you, you give them some information that really sort of helps them on that phase of the journey. So, and really sort of valuable information. Once you've got their um, email address, then you've got a process there to be able to follow them up. So the important thing is just getting that email address. Um, yeah. and, and, that's, and, and once you've got that, that's where you establish your point of difference as a mortgage broker. You're not going to do it with a video on the website. That, that really is just an introduction to you and yourself and your values and maybe how you help people. But really where you uh, start to establish where you're different is yeah. by providing a whole lot of valuable information after they've signed up. So, uh, so, you know, you could have an email sequence that might be sort of like 30 emails covering various things like um, you know, how to spot a rogue real estate agent, you know, when they're trying to sort of, um, uh, you know, get you paying more than you really should. 
uh, you know, what are some of the tricks and tactics I use? Um, uh, uh, what, what are the things that, uh, that the banks do that uh, try and, you know, lock you into um, uh, that are not necessarily in your best interest? Or it might be why fixed rates are bad for you and why you should always be on floating or vice versa, you know, th those sort of things there. So, yeah. so, you, so you start to think about, uh, you know, giving them that sort of information. And what happens is, is that as, as you're delivering that, then uh, they will... Uh, their trust in you starts to um, starts to go up. So that's how you um, uh, demonstrate your uh, point of uh, difference. So you're not going to yeah. do it on your website. You're going to do it on your marketing afterwards. Yeah, because you you basically they're going to go, wow, this person's giving me all this information. I haven't even actually spoken to them. You know, you're building Correct. up that relationship with that person, and yep. you know, satisfying their need for information. Exactly. Yep. And and that and and if you think about, uh, let's say they put a contract on a house and they've they've done the thing where they haven't actually got the finance yet, no pre-approval. But if they've no, done I that, no, never do that. No, of course. <laughs> so um, and if they're going to decide, if they're googling mortgage brokers, then think, oh, we need a mortgage broker. It's like, who do I go with? Some all these people here that I don't know, or do I go with the one that's actually given me a whole lot of really helpful information? So that's yeah. that's really what uh, works for you in your favor. Yeah. Cool. So Thanks, so Tom. your so again, your website's job is only to introduce you to people to bring in those leads. Your job yeah. after that, and the CRM after that, is to develop your credibility, reputation, and how you can help them. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Excellent. All right, so that really brings me to um, this model here. All right, I'm just wanting to. Uh, okay, yep. So on here is uh, this is a customer value journey, or, or you know, sort of a customer journey. So every business has one of these. Um, and uh, people will uh, enter your businesses uh, generally at the beginning, and they'll they'll work through this uh, sequence of um, um, of events or, or or engagement on the way through. And um, at each of these here, they have an immediate need as well too. So um, if we have a look at the bottom left hand side, where the uh, yellow square, that's that's the awareness phase. So this is where they introduced you. So it might be an ad. It could be they've seen you on social media. They found you through uh, Google search. Uh, you know, someone someone's told them about you, and they've. they've so that's that's what we're. That, that's like uh, you know they, they had no idea who you are. Now they know you uh, exist. So um, so that's typically where people focus when they think about uh, lead generation and uh, and you should and, and your website should really be skewed to uh, to dealing with uh, those people there and offering them something that's of um, you know an immediate need for them as well now on now when I say immediate need as well too every page can have a call to action or can have a um, uh, some uh, let's say download or, or lead magnet which has an uh, which deals with an immediate need for them on that page so you don't need to be stuck with just one lead magnet you can have one for every page or one for every service it, it sounds like a lot I mean I'd start with one but then you could um, uh, you know you could build up your repertoire so you've start you know you've got one for every um, uh, for every page um, and so, uh, and so once once they've discovered who you are, they might have downloaded something. Then they might go and um, and and this can happen in a matter of um, uh, of minutes. So they could be there, sort of, uh, you know, for uh, you know, just in one session. Uh, they could then go and read a blog, a post, uh, you know, watch um, uh, a video, uh, maybe sort of click through to social media. Um, and then they go and opt in for to uh, receive gated content. Now, gated content is uh, where they have to, uh, you know, enter their email address. So, so they're going through this 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 phase here. They've seen you. They they become aware of you. They go to your website. They read some uh, read something on the site. Something there that engages them. They think I like this. I want to know more. So they uh, then go and uh, you know give give you their email address uh, in exchange for um, uh, you know what it is that they want. So from there, um, that today they may or may not make a purchase today, or um, um, or, or book a uh, an appointment, or uh, you know consultation. Uh, so that's so it's really in that sort of stage there that your emails kick in. So uh, and so they've downloaded your 
uh, opt-in, which is that uh, square on the bottom right-hand side. Um, and then uh, the arrow that goes up to making a small purchase, all of your emails are helping them to send them back to the website or uh, send them to a transaction. Um, and then once they've uh, purchased, uh, then uh, they get some value out of that transaction. Well, hopefully they get some value out of it. They've drunk the wine, they feel the effects, they feel good about it. So they've had, uh, you know, the desired uh, effect uh, there. So, uh, and they've got a good taste uh, in their mouth. I think this is a really good wine. Uh, I'd actually like some more. And, um, and so once you know they're bought off you, um, then uh, you can start to offer them, you know, your core offer. So your core offer might be, um, uh, in a uh, winery might be a subscription program where they can get delivered uh, wine on a uh, regular basis. So, um, so that might be your, your core offer. Um, and you might have, uh, have an upsell, you might sort of upsell a um, uh, sort of dessert wine or a port or something like that. You, you might upsell, um, uh, you might have another upsell. So, so that's really where, you know, they, they, become, they, they are customers now. So they're your clients and customers that are embedded in your business. And they keep coming back time and time again. Um, and uh, those ones that are happy ones, uh, you know, if you look at the top middle square there, uh, they're the ones that are happy to give a testimonial or you can create a, a case study around them. So case studies are really, really important. Um, so we were talking about the uh, mortgage and finance industry. Uh, that's probably one of the most important things you can do for credibility is having case studies and testimonials. It's other people speaking for for you rather uh, and telling other people how good you are rather than you telling how, you know people how good you are. People don't believe what you say, but they believe what uh, other people say. So um, um, so case studies absolutely critical for most industries. Um, you know, collecting those. So if you can collect them on video, good. Uh, or if it's just text, it's good. Image pictures, that's great too. You can use those case studies in your emails as well too. Um, and then what happens is your customers become advocates where they go and actively tell people uh, about you without even being uh, prompted. So that's that's your customer journey. So really what, what you need to think about is when someone gets to your website, if your website's job is to generate leads, is to get them to leave their email address, um, uh, think about what is their immediate need. So where are they in this process? What's the immediate need that they need to have solved? Uh, and then give them that for free. Um, you can always upsell, uh, you know, something else uh, later on, but you give them that immediate need for free. Uh, and then your process is to communicate with them via uh, CRM. And you can do it through social media too. So social media has got things like, and Google have got things like retargeting and uh, remarketing where, you, where they keep on seeing you again and again and again and again. Um, but for most, but you know, that costs money for most cases. You can, you can achieve a lot of that with uh, your email uh, marketing through your CRM, all set up. Um, uh, you know, without, you know, once it's all set up, you don't actually have to touch it. It all just happens uh, automatically. And then your job is just to uh, go out and become famous and visible so that uh, people can keep coming to your website and say, who is this person? I need to check them out. Let's come to their website and find out, uh, you know, more about what they're doing and what they're offering and to get them to leave their email address and uh, building your, um, your database. So one thing I would say is, and I, I uh, would reiterate this strongly again, is a website and a CRM are two things that are designed to go together. So uh, you need to have both. If you don't have both, you are losing so much money that uh, it will make you cry if you realized how much uh, it was that you were leaving on the table. So um, if you don't have a CRM, my recommendation is to go and uh, find one. Um, if you need any help with that, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help you with, uh, you know, sort of a choice of CRM. Each industry have, uh, you know, have different needs in terms of CRMs as well too. So what works for one industry may not be suitable for another industry. Um, so it is about choosing what's going to be the uh, the best thing for for you. Um, all right. So, um, all right. What do we got? Uh, if you give them too much, oh, that, that's a good question, Jody. If you give them too much information, won't they just take it and go elsewhere to their friend down the road? Yes, that is a risk, and they may do that. But uh, the other thing too is that uh, that principle of psychological reciprocity. That's the first thing, and there's a bit of fear that kicks in as well too. So by by stating your position and giving that information, they take it to their friend down the road, and the friend gives them contrary information. 
then it sows a seed of doubt in their mind as well too. So, um, and so, you, you know, they, they can come back to you and ask a question, they can go to their friend, but it's like, uh, you know, that doubt is a, is a good thing. And if you've given them enough information, that will, will bring them back to you as well too. Just you mentioned uh, in your um, flow diagram there about testimonials. Yep. And uh, I have strong views on that uh, to the point where I even have a whole page on my website dedicated to video testimonials um, because I question how much you can rely on written testimonials. In fact, the only one that I have on my website is the one written by me that says, I am the greatest video producer on the whole of the Southern Hemisphere. Isn't that true? And would you believe that if you saw that written there? That is the problem with testimonials, isn't it? Yeah, but it's not yep. when you have a person who's willing to stand up in front of a camera, identify themselves, their business, if they have one, what their problem was and how you solved it for them. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I, I completely agree, Paul. I think video testimonials are extremely powerful um, yeah. for that perspective um, because credibility is obviously the main, the main issue at hand there. Um, yeah. I think where written testimonials are used, they should be used sparingly and perhaps a maximum of two down on the, you know, below the fold somewhere just to get people thinking in a positive manner. But certainly people aren't going to go, I want to know whether this business is good and write and see something that's written because they don't know who's written that. That's so yeah, right. that video testimonials is, is great. Yeah. So I've just put the link into the, into the chat, but you know, the, if anyone's interested in just learning more about how to capture a, a video testimonial that'll work for you. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really good. That that's absolutely perfect. So I would yeah, hundred percent concur. Video video testimonials, it's to respect. Um, and um, the one thing I would say about testimonials too, it's good to have them on a you know on a page on your website so that it's like overwhelming when people get there. It's like an overwhelming sort of uh, view of testimonials. Also, think about using them uh, throughout your content as well too. So where it fits your content and it supports your content, then uh, using a testimonial there is mm. a really good way to uh, to back it up. So you know you've got the text on the page, uh, and then you've got someone else talking about that. Actually, that text is actually true. That was my experience as well yeah yeah and um different testimonials for different products or services that you offer yes yes absolutely so, yep yep all right um that's brought us to the uh, end of the session today I've uh, covered uh, some of the things I intended to cover. I've covered some of most of the important things. There is a lot more as well too. Um, the key, th the key takeaways, you know, for this here as well too is think is uh, uh, a couple of things. One is your website and your CRM. You must have both, and they must be connected, uh, and um, you must have a uh, some form of uh, solving people's immediate need when they get to the website. If you do that. Uh, your lead generation will uh, will skyrocket. Uh, it will absolutely sort of uh, go up. Um, and think about your customer journey. Your customer journey doesn't end at your website. That's where it starts. A lot of people think their customer journey is all encapsulated in the website. It's not. This is just the first date. Uh, and then from there, that's where your CRM starts to develop the relationships and uh, and take over. And then you step in, and uh, you know you'll bring yourself in. Yep. So the telephone coming in, and uh, you're making that uh, direct connection. So you're moving from highly automated through to you know sort of getting towards personalised right through to an individual conversation. Mm. That's that's the flow you want to go through. Mm. All right. So any any questions, comments, um, anything people are unsure about? Well, there's some gold in that chat, so make sure you save it. Oh, good, good point. Yeah, if you if you go and <laughs> click those three little dots yeah. at, the, at the bottom now, you can actually save that so you've got it. Thanks, Paul. Just me. Oh, um, Jody. Yep. Yeah. The initial video on your homepage. I always thought that if you had it above the fold, it slowed your website down. No, not if you're using Vimeo or YouTube. Okay, cool. It's the above the fold, Rafael, I'm just starting to type an answer to your question. Above the fold is what you see on the screen before you have to go hit a scroll bar. Because 
if you have to hit a scroll bar to find your most important piece of information, those that don't bother, you've, you've lost them. Your, and your, your introductory video is one of the most important pieces, so definitely above the fold. I've noticed a lot of real estate agents with new websites lately, they've got all this crap about scenery and dinners and... Yeah, it's just flashy advertising. Yeah. It's entertainment. It's to make, it's a, oh, didn't that feel good? But uh, do you want to entertain or do you want to get people attracted to your business because you can solve a problem for them? There, there are lots of web developers out there that are sort of targeting the uh, real estate industry because they perceive they have, they've uh, got a bit of money to spend because they spend money on uh, marketing. Yeah. Um, they may not know the truth that that that's, may not be the case, but that's what they think. And uh, what they and what they deliver are um, those flashy websites with uh, all of the bells and whistles on it that are vanity really for vanity so that the, the person that owns the website thinks this is a really cool website um, but in all effects it just does not work you will find a lot of those websites do not work the, um, and sometimes the best websites are the uh, ugliest websites in the world uh, because they're very functional and uh, they do a particular job and i would guarantee they're doing things like solving the immediate need of the person that uh, arrives at the website. So um, you can have the ugliest site in the world that, uh, that if, if, if it's got the right information, uh, it's going to do a way ugly. better job than uh, a pretty website. Ugly under that classification. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got a range I'm a technical of person, not a not a um, not an artist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sorry, who did I cut off then? No, that's all good. All right. Well, look, that's that's our session for tonight. Um, if uh, if you do want to uh, get in touch and have a look at your website, I'm more than happy to um, offer a um, uh, a review and an audit of your website. So, if you want to look at what you can do to improve your website uh, in terms of the conversions, in terms of the sorts of things that we've talked about tonight, um, more than happy for you to uh, organise a time with me and um, and uh, you know go through that and give you some su suggestions for it. Uh, let me just pop into the chat here a link for that. Uh, now I do have. Uh, I do not have unlimited time, unfortunately. So it is a first in first serve uh, basis for this. Um, so that'll take you through to my calendar. You can go and book it in. And um, uh, what would be helpful for me too is when you do book it in, put your URL to the website in there uh, so that I know what I'm looking at so I can prepare uh, in advance and have a, a bit of a look at it uh, in, ad, at, uh, in advance. A uh, couple of outcomes with that is uh, one, you might need to uh, find that uh, the worst case, you've got to throw your website out and start again. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, usually for most people, it can be some tweaks and some changes and things that uh, will really start to uh, improve the uh, website uh, so that you're, you know, you're generating the leads and it's actually doing its, uh, its job. So, um, so feel free to click on that and uh, if, if that's going to be helpful for you um, and more than happy to help there. Um, and I think that's it. I was going to offer a prize tonight, but in fact, in fact, that is the prize. So, um, uh, so that's uh, off open for everyone. All right. Well, that's our session for tonight. So uh, let's give a big round of applause to the speaker. Thank you very much. <laughs> and um, <laughs> this this will be uh, up on uh, YouTube tomorrow and the Smash Go YouTube uh, channel tomorrow. So if you do want to watch it again or you want to point people to it, uh, it'll be up there sort of tomorrow afternoon. If you go there now, uh, the link is in uh, chat. If you go to the uh, uh, and subscribe, and if you click the bell by the subscribe, it means you'll get a notification as soon as the uh, replay is up there uh, ready to watch. Uh, a couple of other things as well, too. If you're not a member of the Business Owners Smashing It Online Facebook group, uh, go and join that uh, because uh, we post a lot of these sort of things uh, to that group and uh, other people are posting there as well, too. Um, and the other thing is, is that we have coming up uh, there in the very, very near future, the 45 uh, day challenge uh, to generate $100 a day additional in your business using some online tools and strategies. So that's a program putting together that works for any business. You don't have to be an online business. You can be 